Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Welcome back to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, 2020 was poised to be a record year for Liam Tutty's craft beer company, Dead Centre Brewing. However, like so many other industries, COVID-19 attempted to put the business on hold. But not to be deterred, the pandemic served as a catalyst for Beer Cloud and the online sales through the platform have salvaged revenue for many of Ireland's craft breweries. Liam will be discussing how Beer Cloud is the craft brewing sector's innovative response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But first, tell us about why you decided to go into this particular industry in the first instance. Morning, Carl. Thanks very much. In 2007 and 2008, I took some time out and uh, went, as many people do, and took a year in Australia. Um, And in Australia, I discovered lots and lots of of different kinds of beers, and particularly craft brewing. Um, And then, obviously, when I came back, I wasn't able to get those beers. So I started home brewing as a hobby, and one thing led to another, as they say. So tell us about starting out with Dead Centre Brewing. What was your vision for the brand at that particular time? The vision changed a lot, I have to say. Um, I, at the time, I'm originally from Wicklow, but I was living in Athlone in County Westmead, and Westmead was the only county in Ireland that didn't have a brewery. Uh, so at the time, the, the, the vision was very much a small regional brewery uh, to work out of the Midlands, but obviously what we did in the end uh, was something pretty different. So what we have is a, a brew pub. So we have a full seven-day uh, full-service bar, so wine, spirits, beers, everything, uh, and we have the brewery inside the pub. So it's it's something completely different than what the vision was initially. OK, now that, of course, was of major benefit to you locally. But what about growing the business outside of that in this very competitive industry? How did you go about it? Uh, slowly, to be honest. Again, it's still something that we, we, we kind of tackle relatively slowly. We very much went around just building relationships. And I was lucky enough, having come from a, 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 a previous role in a brewery, that I knew quite a lot of the independent craft stores around Dublin, Galway, Cork. Um, so we very much did what we, what we, I suppose you could call it puddle marketing, whereby we started uh, putting stock into, into smaller places and then letting it expand out from there. Now, your product range is quite quirky. And on that basis, I'd be very interested to find out and to get an insight into your new product development process. Uh, yeah, we... <laughs> It's it's an it's a bit of a Willy Wonka uh, <laughs> set up in that centre. To be honest with you, uh, we brew uh, all kinds of everything. Um, we've used glitter in beer. We make a glitter beer once a year called Disco Ain't Dead. Wow. Um, we we have a beer in tank at the moment, which was Easter inspired. So it's a hot cross bun stout. So really, what we do is we look at we look at seasonality, and we see what would work in this kind of weather. And um, last summer we made uh, a raspberry milkshake. Blonde ale, so it was a sweet raspberry infused ale. Uh, we put it on nitro, so it would settle very much like a traditional Guinness. So it reflected an ice cream during summer. So seasonality, I think, has a lot to do with it. And apart from that, just kind of whatever, whatever we can dream up. Now, of course, one of the major challenges facing the micro brewing, the craft brewing sector, is that there's over 100 micro breweries in Ireland. The market is absolutely saturated, isn't it? It really is. It's a very difficult uh, industry to make a living in, to be perfectly honest with you. I think, you know, when the boom came maybe six or seven years ago in brewing, a lot of people saw it as, look, this is this is a cash cow. This is a way to, to make money easy. Um, but I think people are learning the hard way that, you know, you have to be doing something different. You can't just do the same old, same old and, and really come out the far side of it stronger. So it's... Um, the, the one thing I will say about it is it really drives creativity. I think if you're a brewery that's not creative, you know, it's it's very difficult for you to make any inroads. So a lot of the people that you see succeeding are people who are doing something really different and really stepping the game up. So, Liam, is the real opportunity then for craft breweries to create very, very strong local connections and strategic alliances with those in the food business? I, I think so. That's certainly how we're playing out at Dead Centre. We, we are keeping it very local. We're lucky, you know, to have the, the full bar and, and people can come and actually connect with us. And as I said, the brewery is in the bar. So you can, you know, order a pint, stand at the bar and look through the 27 square metre glass wall at the brewers and see exactly what it is they're doing and how they're doing it so that we're not taking any shortcuts. We're not cutting any corners. We're doing things as they should be done. Uh, and you can get an appreciation for that. And maybe the next time when you're standing in a supermarket and you see 
well, this product is 30 cent more expensive. That's why, because it's it's a labour intensive process, you know. And is there an opportunity to extend that even further by involving your clients in the production process of the beer itself to get a real hands on experience? Yeah, well, we're lucky as well in that we've been um, working very closely with Falls Ireland over the last twelve months, and and this summer was set to be a, you know, it was, it's it's difficult to talk about even, but it was set to be a really really big summer for us. Because obviously we have, you know, we have the kitchen, the bar, the brewery, but we also offer tours in the brewery. And it's important to us if people come and do a brewery tour that they leave, you know, at least somewhat as passionate about the product as we are. So it's it, it, that aspect of the business is all about getting people hands on, getting them involved, letting them taste the raw ingredients before it goes into the into the um, the beer. And, and we find that people who come do a brewery tour those people will be loyal customers. They will buy the beer again and again wherever they see it. So it is very important. I think that's a, a huge a huge part of our business. So you had very ambitious growth plans for 2020. What impact did COVID-19 have on that? Yeah, it, it's it's been devastating. You know, we've we've obviously tried to pivot and tried to stay creative. Um but we we had grow we we had projected growth of about 17.5% for this year, uh, which is enormous. Um, but it was it was absolutely achievable. Um, obviously, instead, it's it's um, it's 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 not going to be good news. But look again, all we, we're staying positive wherever we can. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we are being creative, and that when we come out the tail end, that we're very much front of mind with with people who maybe hadn't been aware of the brewery before. Now, COVID-19 has certainly tested the creativity of business owners right across the country and right across the world. So how did you adapt your business then to be able to confront COVID-19 and overcome that challenge? Well, there's been a couple of things. We, we, we have a full pizza kitchen in the, in the, in the pub as well. So we've, we've continued to operate that uh, at weekends for takeaway, which is something that we haven't actually done before. But the big step has been creating beer cloud. So... Through Beer Cloud, we use our own publican's license, uh, which includes an off license. Uh, we set up a website within a week. Uh, we got six other breweries on board with us who we were selling beer for at zero margin. So what you paid for on the site, basically what came into the dead center account was what those brewers were being paid. Um, and the idea was just to, to try and keep as many of the breweries uh, route to market open as we possibly could. And Liam, how did you go about actually creating awareness around Beer Cloud and how successful has it been? It's blown us away, to be perfectly honest with you, because we had always sold beer online because our, li- our licence allowed us to do that, um, whereas a lot of the other breweries obviously hadn't done that. So pre-COVID-19, we were maybe selling a case a day maximum um, through the website. Um, so when the other breweries came to us and said, look, we... Um, uh, well, I went to them rather and said, I-, I have this ability, let me help you out. I, one of the things that I said was just to flag, it's not going to, nobody's going to become a millionaire off the back of this. Sales are very low. But obviously, there has just been a complete shift in how people shop. So we're doing significant volume. So we just broke a, a thousand cases that we've shipped in three weeks. And are these sales being made locally, regionally, nationally or internationally? Uh, across the 32 counties on the island, we had initially been shipping to the 26 counties. We launched pretty much as lean as possible. And one of the things that got kind of put to one side so that we could launch quickly was the, the setting up of the Northern Ireland shipping category. And since then, we've actually been doing good volume into the north as well. Uh, but a majority of it would be to, to the Republic. Um, but it's, it's all four corners of the island. It's, it, it genuinely is straight across the board. And what's your strategy for ramping up sales from here on Beer Cloud? That's a brilliant question, but to be perfectly honest, we've, we're just fighting fires at the moment. We're so overwhelmed by the, by the volume that we're doing through the site. Um, unfortunately, COVID has meant that you know, we employ 10 people in dead centre. Uh, eight of those are laid off. Um, so we're a very, very small team that are trying to manage this huge volume of beer. So at the moment, uh, I am busy printing labels, packing bo- boxes, uh, putting the labels, or putting the boxes in the van, uh, to actually work on a strategy. So, it, it, to be honest with you, 
the strategy is not as strong as it should be at the moment, but it's something we definitely want to look at you know, sooner rather than later. It's a great initiative and it's great to see the creativity coming to life within the craft beer sector to be able to overcome the challenges, of course, thrown at you by COVID-19. Finally this morning, Liam, if any craft breweries in the southeast would like to start selling on Beer Cloud, how can they get involved? Uh, it's no problem at all. Luckily enough, as a, the, the brewing community, although there's a lot of us in it, it's relatively tight knit, so most people would would you know know how to to get in touch with me. So just jump on the website beercloud.ie, and down at the very bottom of the website, there's an email address uh, for me, uh, or you can just jump onto you know um, Beer Cloud's Facebook or message me through that. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Liam Tutty from Dead Center Brewing and Beer Cloud, and it's great to see innovation and creativity triumphing over adversity in these times of crisis. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.